On the evening of May 16, 1943, 19 Lancaster bombers of 617 Squadron, led by Britain's most famous bomber pilot, Guy Gibson, crossed the Dutch coast. Skimming the treetops to avoid radar, each plane was carrying a top-secret five-ton bouncing bomb. Their mission, Operation Chastise, was to breach three major hydro dams on the heavily defended Ruhr River that powered Germany's industrial heartland. If the bombs work and the dams crumble, they hoped to permanently cripple German war production and shorten the war. The odds were long. During the Second World War, 55,000 Canadians would fly with Bomber Command, and over 10,000 made the ultimate sacrifice serving their nation. For Bomber Command, this would be their most audacious, dangerous, and famous bombing raid of the war. Inside Gibson's Lancaster was Calgary's Harlow Terram, otherwise known as Terry. He was the squadron's lead navigator, and he would guide the soon-to-be-famous dam busters to their targets. Torger Harlow Terry Terram was born May 22, 1920, on a farm near Milo, Alberta. The first of Norwegian immigrants Hilda and Gutorm's four children. When Terry was 11, tragedy struck the family, after his father lost his life attempting to save two drowning boys. Hilda's scrapbook shows her son after he graduated high school. It was the late 1930s and the family had just moved to Calgary. The future seemed bright, but storm clouds were brewing over Europe. September 10, 1939, Canada joined her allies and declared war on Germany. By February 1941, like many other Canadians who would serve with Bomber Command, Terry was in training with the Royal Canadian Air Force. A year later, he was flying on obsolete Hamden bombers in England as a navigator with 50 Squadron. He would even meet Pat, the woman he wanted to marry. Having flown 35 operations, his logbook had recorded many narrow escapes including caught in searchlights, hit by flak, and a crash landing. Nevertheless, despite the dangers, Terry was determined to keep flying until the job was done. Terry had earned a reputation for precise navigation and was hand-picked by Guy Gibson for this secret mission. 617 Squadron's training began in March 1943, practicing low-level attacks and skipping their bombs across water. But they trained without knowing what their true targets might be. By May, they were raring to go. Only hours before takeoff did the crews learn that their targets were the dams of the Ruhr Valley, whose reservoirs were brimming, heavy with the waters of the spring runoff. On May 16th, Tarim recorded that their Lancaster took off at precisely 9.40 p.m. Flying at such low altitudes, their navigational instruments were ineffective. Tarim used a compass, a stopwatch, a map, the stars and landmarks to navigate. He performed flawlessly and right on schedule. Their first target, the Mona Dam, loomed into sight. Attention all aircraft. I'm going in to attack. Flying at 390 kilometers per hour, with their five-ton bomb spinning at 500 RPMs, it had to be released 390 meters away from the dam at a height of 18 meters. If everything worked, the bomb would skip across the water, clear the torpedo nettings, hit the dam, then sink, explode, crack the foundation, and the water's pressure would do the rest. Tarim turned on two spotlights, slung under the Lancaster's nose and tail. When they intersected on the water, they knew the plane's altitude was at 18 meters. He looked out the cockpit's blister window and instructed Gibson. Up a bit. Steady. Steady. German tracers arced towards the bomber. The nose gunner, George Deering, another Canadian, returned fire. Gibson held steady. The bomb was released, but the dam held. Gibson ordered the next planes to attack and flew in beside them to draw German fire. One bomber exploded, another missed, but the fourth bomber scored a direct hit. When the dam collapsed, millions of gallons of water surged downstream. The damage and losses caused by the torrent was enormous. Tarim, Gibson and the remaining Lancasters flew on to their next target, the Eder Dam. It was also breached, but the third target, the Sorpe Dam, despite two direct hits, refused to crumble. The surviving raiders turned back for home. The next day, the press hailed the raid as a great success, but the cost had been heavy on 617 Squadron. Eight bombers were lost during the action, and of their 56 crewmen, only three had survived and were taken prisoner. Tarim was declared a hero by local papers in Alberta, and in England, he met the king and queen. He wrote to his mother Hilda, 
I was really lucky to be introduced to both of them. The Queen is gracious and charming. On June 22nd, the King decorated the surviving dam busters. He pinned a Victoria Cross on Gibson's chest and a distinguished flying cross on Tarim's. On September 11th, 1943, Guy Gibson arrived in Calgary on a Victory Bond tour. He told the local press that Terry was a great pal and that he got the dam busters to the job. Terry's mother, Hilda, recalled her time with Gibson is one of the proudest and happiest times of her life. Only days later, on September 16th, Terry was flying another dangerous low-level mission when his plane was shot down. There were no survivors. He was 23 years old. As the war raged on in Europe, Gibson was killed in late 1944. And on February 21st, 1945, Terry's youngest brother, Flight Sergeant Clifford Terram, aged 18, was shot down over Holland during his sixth mission. It'd been a hard war for the Terram family. Despite knowing the risks, Terry and many Canadians just like him were proud to serve with Bomber Command, one of the most dangerous jobs of the Second World War. A dam buster, a man of steely courage and quiet determination, Harlow Terry Terram was truly a monumental Canadian. <laughs>